day everyone. So this is a video I've been meaning to make for quite a while. I thought we could have another look at the vinyls I've been getting over the past year. It's been quite a few so I think we're going to have to pick out some. We can't go through all of them for too long. To be honest, I haven't been able to listen to all of them as much as I would like because I've been getting a bit too enthusiastic about purchasing new ones. I think that's just one of the dangers with collecting music. So I've organized them a little bit and we're going to start with the brighter ones and are slowly going to work our way towards the heavier bands and albums. And we're starting with my favorite album from last summer. This is Anjali Kicho, Mother Nature. I think this one came out in 2020. It's actually 21 here, all the way at the bottom. And I remember I heard this track first. It was released with Sting, who's not featured here on the album. It's a really catchy song. And I read that on this album in general, you can see that there's lots and lots of other artists featured. Um, I read that Anjali Kichu wanted to introduce a lot of younger artists who might not be as well known yet. It's a really, really great album. And I also particularly love the colors and the photos. And I was listening to it in summer mostly, but I guess it's also a great album right now in winter if you need a little pick-me-up. I just really, really love her style. Look at that amazing necklace. The bright color here. And these beautiful layers of her dress. I love the fabric. So, I don't know, you might be familiar with Anjali Kichu. She's released a lot of albums, a really prolific artist, um, and also does a lot of other very good work. And if you don't know her, I very much recommend that you check her out. Definitely, I think, one of my highlights from the last year in terms of the music I've been getting. And then the other summer album I got at the same time is this one here, Clang Bin and Liam Bridges, Texas Sun. This was recommended on one of the last videos and I remember I looked up the song and I kind of had it on for, I think, two days in a row. Again, this is just kind of really nice, mellow, solemn music. My only issue with this one is it's a bit short. It's an EP with just four tracks. Texas Sun. 
midnight, seaside and conversion. And the band released another EP called Texas Moon. And I kind of wish they'd put both EPs together on one album. Not that I don't like it as it is, but you know, sometimes they charge you a bit much for even the shorter albums. But that's alright. So, thank you for mentioning this album. It's definitely part of my summer soundtrack. Then we have two albums that I got second hand. You can see here on the edges that it's a bit older, a little bit worn, but the album itself is in good condition. This is a band called Rasa who I showed on the very first video that I did on vinyls and that was with an older collection not albums that belonged to me and I'd never heard of the band but I liked the cover art and I got a couple comments that said they're a really great band and I should check them out. I only got this recently, I haven't listened to it very much. Mostly in the mornings while I was getting ready for work. And maybe there wasn't quite the right opportunity. I noticed I really like this last track on side B which I find very catchy, but the two beforehand were a bit much in the morning. So, I don't know, I might have to give it another go. Maybe a bit later in the day. And I like their little text here. The vibrant reddish lotus unfolds and the full sound of Raza begins to bloom undisturbed by turbulent wind or waves lies tranquil upon the azure waters of the satisfied mind the lotus Raza radiates an effulgence of pure transcendental sound energy to free wondrous from the maze of illusion it's very 70s right? And then this one's also second hand. Um, I walk past this little store that is just packed with old albums, like floor to ceiling. And they didn't have a lot of albums that I was familiar with, or a lot of artists. But I thought that I recognized the name. Sarah Jane Morris, um, I figured maybe I know this song here, Me and Mrs. Jones, but turns out I don't, I was mistaken. I just figured, you know, for 10 years, I'll just try it, I'll see if I like it, it's a little surprise. And it is kind of exactly as I thought it would be very 80s um, and a bit more than I thought it would be. She has an incredible voice um, that goes quite deep at times. I did not expect that. I thought it would be a little more poppy, a little more easy listening maybe. But it's been uh, nice to explore this and to listen to something I haven't known at all and I 
think the difference about actually getting the album to listen to it as opposed to say streaming it online or looking it up somewhere where you can just kind of quickly skip through the tracks is that an LP invites you to really take your time and actually let the whole album run through rather than just bravely listening to it and then maybe skipping to the next track. And I think that's always a good exercise to actually sit down and pay attention. Also, I think the cover photo here is just so charming. I think it's really cute. Then we have another very charming artist. You probably know this cover, this is Shade. And a friend of mine's always a bit bewildered that I just I love Shade. Um it kind of shares my taste in metal, so this is just a bit unexpected for him. But I love all her songs. Of course, there's Smooth Operator on here. Saying on to your love. No ordinary love. The sweetest taboo. And she kind of has this iconic look. Not on this cover, incidentally. But she often has this really sleek ponytail with the bright red lipstick. Just an absolutely gorgeous woman. And just some iconic songs on here. I figured this one's a must-have when I found it in a shop. I thought, okay, I've been buying a bit too much music, but this one I'll just love to get it sooner or later anyway. And this is another artist who's pretty much a must-have in my collection. This was a present from Katie. Thank you so, so much. This Leonard Cohen, Hallelujah, and songs from his albums. So this one's a bit of a myth. There's Hallelujah, live at Glastonbury, which incidentally I think is my least favorite song by Leonard Cohen because I've just heard it so, so often. But it's still a really wonderful song. And then other than that, I have a hard time picking favorites. There's Suzanne and Bird on the Wire. Who by fire in my secret life a thousand kisses deep you want it darker I really like all of these um, in my secret life was one of the first songs I really really listened to by Leonard Cohen it's on 10 new songs. The first album I heard. And that I had on repeat once I heard it. For I think a couple months. And I love the way this is illustrated here. With his notes. And the images.
throughout the years. And I'm always impressed by kind of how gracefully Leonard Cohen aged. Which is definitely something to admire, right? I was a bit sad I didn't get to see him live. He did play in the vicinity of Vienna a couple of years ago. Um, and I thought about getting a ticket at the time, but getting there and back turned out to be a little difficult. I don't have a car and I thought there will probably be another time where I can get to the venue by public transport in a less complicated manner, so I'll just wait until then. And unfortunately that never happened. But that's okay. That's just how it is sometimes. And I love listening to his music on albums or having a look at the live recording, so I think I'm good. Not too many regrets about that. All right, and then we're getting to albums that are a little bit different. This is Conan, and the right looks like a symbol was carved into a tree. You can see here they're playing um, folk or folk inspired music. The names are all from Scandinavian languages. Haltegutten, Polska Sit, Elvefert. I got the album specifically because of this song here. Valot, which is with Aina Selvig from Bartrune. That's here. And Marie Frant is also singing on it. And I really, really like their voices together. It's a beautiful song. And it starts off with a spoken text, a find from after 1332, from a farm near Bergen. That one's a bit slower and a bit gloomier. But then you have a lot of goes on here and enough faster, brighter songs that I guess you could dance to. Like here, Haltegüten, which is actually a mix of two different songs. There's a Norwegian fiddle tune and the Swedish song called Flickkanstor på Gulve which is also on another album that I have by Mirko, but in a very different uh, version. It's a lovely album, I like this quite a lot. Alright, and then I guess this one goes more with Raza from earlier. This is by a band called Um. And the 
this has some, oh, I don't know what exactly it is, like Indian inspired tunes. It's basically stoner rock or stoner metal with some psychedelic aspects. I think that's the best way to describe it. Really, really lovely album. They have another one that I might like a little bit more, but that's been difficult to get hold of. So I went for this one. It was actually a Christmas present last year. They also have this lovely illustration here that's kind of black on black. Just beautifully done. My only issue is that it's a relatively short album, it's I think about 40 minutes and you have four sides, so you're kind of switching sides every 10 minutes and with Stone and Metal I think you're invited to really let it run through for the whole album you don't want to get up every 10 minutes And the second album I got at the time for Christmas is this one here. And I think that might be the album I played the most over the past year. This is Ghost. Who sort of look like they may be playing something really heavy. Now let's see what we have picture of them. They're playing with a lot of this Christian imagery. The singer is dressed up as a pope often and he has these ghouls playing in the band with him. But the Music's often more kind of classic rock inspired. I've seen it described as uh, Scooby Doo, which I find very funny and kind of fitting. It's very catchy, and I thought the album in general, it works so well from start to finish. And there's so many little bits to find and, and to pick up in the songs, especially with the better sound quality. And this is just incredibly beautifully made. These illustrations for every single song. I think this one's my favorite song, Call Me Little Sunshine. I love this one. Um, I know I've mentioned this before, and someone replied in the comments that they also. Really, really like that. And I know it's a band that's a bit divisive. Some people don't know what to do with them at all. Or I think some people also take issues over whether they actually are a metal band or not. But I think that's not important. If it's something that you enjoy, then it's all good. Right. Okay, and before we get to the 
the heavier albums or the actual metal albums here's one that's standing out a bit this one's called Flicts Sonios Compidos this is as you can see here punk rock not something I have on very often um, but I saw one of these guys, I don't actually remember who he was, I think him, with another band, uh, they're from Brazil, and the other band apparently is quite well known, they're called Acotoxico, I'd never heard of them, but a friend of mine from Brazil said, we have to go, they're like a cult band, and they were playing in this teeny tiny venue here in Vienna, and I thought they were really really great just a fantastic band and um, the friend insisted that I get the album afterwards which I'm very grateful for so let me know if you've heard of them to me they were completely new but lovely surprise Alright, and then we're getting to the darker albums. There's not a lot of color variation from here on out on the covers. So this one's teeny tiny. This is Rotting Christ and Monumentum. Not a band I'd heard of before. Um, but I picked this up second hand and the person who sold it to me said that this is actually a really great track that he liked a lot it's a split EP originally from around 1990 and this was re-released in 2020 it's just these two songs but since Rotten Christ are one of my absolute favorites I really wanted to get this one mostly for sentimental value it's just really nicely made and something I just appreciate having And there's an old classic here, Bathory, and the design of the black mark. So first wave of black metal from the 80s, still has this really cheesy 80s metal cover, I love it. And funnily, Bathory is not really a band I listen to a lot when I got into metal. Um, I, they were referenced a lot, like I did know about them. But I'm not sure that you are actually able to get the albums in the stores at the time. And like I would always look through these CDs. And our local store had a lot of metal, surprisingly. But I don't think I ever saw Buffery. I still knew some of the songs like Enter the Eternal Fire or Call from the Grave. I think I, this one wasn't one of the samplers I had at the time. It has a cover by one of the gothic metal bands. I really love how kind of cheesy this is and cliche with the coat and the red eyes and the font that they chose. It's a catchy album though, like there's a reason this is such a cult piece. And I figured it's a must-have in my 
collection. Then, this one's another Christmas present, but we're moving forward by a year now. This is from last month. Paradise Lost, Draconian Times, the 25th anniversary edition. All right, I said these wouldn't be colorful albums, but this one exception here. I really like this one with these deep shades of blue and purple and red. Some green and yellow here. So, Paradise Lost played in Vienna, in full, on a beautiful day where for the first time it actually felt like it was getting colder, and there was a little gloom moving in, which I actually quite like about the weather in October. And it was just the perfect background for the concert. There are also some of the older pictures here, where they still all had long hair. I'm always fascinated by how much Paradise Lost changed both in their appearance, as well as their style. I like that they've gone back to some of the heavier sound that they used to have. But I've also really enjoyed the... Oh, I don't know. Is it fair to call them popular albums? Like one second. I do love these early ones though. And this was pretty much the soundtrack of autumn for me. There are so many songs by Paradise Lost that I would all count as favourites. But this one's really been sticking with me. The last month as I see your face. Love this. fortress here in their logo and the album's called Island. They are a black metal band from Germany, from Bavaria, who've been around for quite a while but somehow I'd never listened to them. But then two people independently from one another asked me to come to the concert. And then it turned out that this actually was one of their last gigs ever. It was their goodbye tour. And I think they just played one more show. So at home in Bavaria. And it was the first time I've really ever heard them. And that's 
both great because I really enjoyed it, but of course also a bit of a shame that I won't have another opportunity. Although who knows, maybe there'll be a reunion tour at some point. I find their uh, photos a little bit funny. Very cliche with the corpse paint. I guess on brand, I should say. So there was the soundtrack of Spring before I switched to Angelique Kicho, once I go older. Alright, and we're slowly getting to the end. So I posted about this one. This is Satyricon from Norway. And they have this stunning cover here with art by Edward Munch. And I actually went to Norway um, almost two years ago to see a special exhibition at the Munch Museum where Satyricon created the soundtrack. It was probably my favorite exhibition ever. <laughs> Two things coming together that I really like. This was released before, so it's a bit older. It's from 2017. Called deep, calleth upon deep. And I listened to it a couple times, mostly on my phone, frankly, or with uh, small headphones. But I feel like getting this on vinyl and listening to it on a proper system, it's made me enjoy it so much more. I like pretty much all the sides, so I've probably had the last one on the most with black wings and withering gloom and burial side. For fans of early Opeth, 16 horsepower in the fields of the Nephilim. I don't hear fields of the Nephilim in this, frankly, but um, I really, really like it. The friend that suggested Wayfarer to me said it's a little bit like Black Metal Band doing a soundtrack for our western like think any more on it and that made me really curious maybe any more on a bit too much but the western association definitely fits and i want to show you my favorite part about this aside from the music 
It says here it has a newspaper style booklet. Look at this. It says here American Gothic, Denver City, Colorado, two cents each daily. Saturday, October 27th, 1934. Then you have the lyrics here with the credits and the pictures of the band dressed up in style from that era. You have the Thousand Tombs of Western Promise, the Cattle Thief, Reaper on the Oil Fields, High Plains Eulogy. My favorite song is this one To Enter My House Justified. Which I think is a quote from a western that I haven't seen. It ends with false constellations. I just really, really like this. And it's such a nice and fitting idea. Whoever designed this, hopefully God a race. If that was that kind of employment. There we go. just kept the plastic on this one because I wanted to keep the little sticker on the front about the newspaper style booklet and I know I initially said I would get one album per month so that's a treat but that's been more than 12 albums I've just shown you and I have to admit, I've already left out a few. But I'm just keeping them for next time. I've just been getting a little carried away. But it's just a really nice feeling to see your collection grow with all the music you've been enjoying over the past years. And after all, I really didn't buy music for quite a long time. Alright, but I think for today, that's more than enough. Let me know what you've been listening to, if you have any favourites or recommendations. I'll see you again next week.